This has been long overdue. I apologize. But anyway, this is the finest top 10 biggest sea dinosaurs in the world. There's no top, but like 10 biggest sea dinosaurs in the world and already the title is just absolutely stupid. So let's begin. We all know dinosaurs were big. That's kind of their whole deal. So you're just going to let the Compi, the Velociraptor, Takasaurus, etc. Just cry in the corner like that. But some of the biggest are not the ones you know. Some of the biggest were sneaking around underwater the whole time. From the Liopleurodon to the Helicoprion. No, I'm not looking forward to trying to pronounce these names. Okay, so besides the fact that the Liopleurodon and Helicoprion are not dinosaurs, the Helicoprion lived before the dinosaurs even existed. I don't know why this guy thought it would be okay to call a Helicoprion a dinosaur. It's even worse than calling most other marine reptiles dinosaurs, like the um, Liopleurodon, for example, the Kronosaurus, the Pliosaurus. These are the biggest sea dinosaurs in the world. Let's begin. Huh? Why does this animation remind me of Americano? Mm -hmm. Number 10, Liopleurodon. Of all the sea-based dinosaurs to have ever existed. Ah, uh, yes. Now you're just casually showing the 25-meter Liopleurodon and then just calling a Liopleurodon a dinosaur. This, uh, this makes the clip over here even funnier. The Liopleurodon is the main event. If Jurassic Park had treated us to an underwater scene and had, you know, actually featured dinosaurs from the Jurassic period, Liopleurodon would have been the star over the T-Rex. This guy, at least this guy is getting straight to the point, but like, uh, I hate to break it to you, Liopleurodon is not a dinosaur. This is, this is a common misconception among the mainstream where Anything that looks, well, anything that looks quote-unquote scary and anything that is quote-unquote large enough it can be classed and called a dinosaur. Just throw in everything, just call it a dinosaur. Megalodon is a dinosaur. Sarcosuchus is a dinosaur. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why the mainstream would just come up with all sorts of ridiculous things. They were one of the biggest, if not the biggest, of all sea dinosaurs to have ever haunted the Earth's oceans. So, you're just going to play through with the 25-meter Liopleurodon. Is that what you're saying? Now, although we know for certain they were big, real big, there's still quite a bit of contention among the paleontology community as to how big. Many insist that the reality was around 20 feet in length, but there are those who argue the Liopleurodon reached as long as over 50 feet. That's a whole lot of dinosaur. Remember when I told you that classifying something as a dinosaur uh, for the mainstream, one of the factors is if it's big enough, long enough, whatever? This just proves why. In order to better understand them, scientists even recreated the Liopleurodon's paddles with robots. Because, you know, if you're a professional scientist, why not make a robot dinosaur? You can't make it if you don't know how to make it. Sounds like something that would happen in a crazy Jurassic Park and Terminator crossover movie, but by all means, risk it, you mad scientists. But the idea, at least, was to recreate their paddles robotically to test how fast and agile the Liopleurodon would have been. The answer, surprisingly given the size of them, is very. Not only were they huge, but they had real speed to them. Scientists suspect that they attacked in short, fast bursts like a crocodile, lunging for the prey and sipping through the waters far faster than you ever would have expected from their frame. Big and fast, a deadly combo. There really is... Nothing good to say about this because, like, I feel like these are not wrong by any means, but at the same time, these are the seed. This is not cl this video is not clickbait, but it is already one of the dumbest videos that I've ever seen because sea dinosaurs, man. Sea dinosaurs. Number nine, Leviathan Melvilli. This whale-like dinosaur- This video has to be satire, right? Calling Leviathan a dinosaur. A whale-like dinosaur, by the way. 
There is no way that this video was meant to be serious. It was so colossal, it, do you know what it ate for lunch? Other whale-like dinosaurs. Yeah, I'm convinced this video is satire, but at the same time, it's made by a channel with over 7 million subscribers. It could swallow an orca for breakfast. It could swallow a sperm whale for lunch. After that, it might be too full to have a big dinner, so it would probably just opt for a seaweed salad, but you get the picture. These things were big. Of all the known animals that use teeth as a part of the eating process, it had the biggest by far. They were thought to have shared the same ocean space as the legendary Megalodon. We're just calling the Megalodon legendary now because the Megalodon has been mentioned a 100 bazillion times. And that is one fight we are desperate to see. Two leviathans of the ocean. Okay, what is this creature supposed to be? Um, is it some sort of submarine thing? No. Is it some sort of... No, that, that could not be called awesome, bro. This might just be some sort of art. Oceans going tooth to tooth. Throw in the robot shark from the last item on this list and you've got one heck of a gnarly battle on your hands. And we don't use that word Leviathan lightly. Take a look at this dino's name again. Leviathan Melville. The more this guy calls these creatures dinosaurs, the more I die inside. The more literary astute among you may have clocked the etymology here. The name is a reference to both the original Leviathan, a giant sea monster from the Bible, and author Herman Melville, who wrote the novel Moby Dick. Not to mention, their head was 10 feet long and featured the same echolocating equipment as modern toothed whales, making them much more effective in murky water. I've never once heard someone call something a toothed whale before. If the great white whale and Moby Dick had been one of these, it would have eaten the Pequot and everyone on board as a snack. Number 8. Helicoprion. These sharks grew to be about 15 feet long. Okay, so the Helicoprion was not a shark, and it reached around 16 to 26 feet in length. Like I said earlier, the Helicoprion lived before the dinosaurs even existed, so there's no way that it could classify as a dinosaur. And had a lower jaw that was made of a tooth whorl. It looks like a cross between a circular saw and a shark, and when you mix apex predators with power tools, oh, the world quakes in fear. Helicoprion's teeth were serrated, implying that they were definitely carnivores. But there's some debate as to whether their teeth were in the front of their mouth, as shown in the picture, or if they were further back, which would suggest a softer diet like jellyfish. However it was arranged, it clearly worked. Helicoprion survived the Permian-Triassic extinction. No, it did not. It did not even live to witness the Permian-Triassic extinction event, aka the Great Dying. It lived 290 to 270 million years ago, and the Permian-Triassic extinction event occurred around 251.9 million years ago. Around, um, around 18 million years or so after the Helicoprion went extinct. Which means they may have been smart enough to create bomb shelters. Or maybe they just lived in the deep sea. These cliches are getting outright ridiculous. Number seven, Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus was a 30 foot long carnivorous tank. I'm betting that this guy is going to compare Dunkleosteus with Ankylosaurus. Okay, so 30 foot long, that is definitely outdated. When was this video made? June 10, 2019. So, the 30 foot long estimate, this is just outdated and not ridiculous. It was outlasted by sharks, but I'm sure that is small consolation for the variety of creatures this beast ate. Also, forgot to mention, the Dunkleosteus is, has no way of being a dinosaur because it lived in a Devonian period. Instead of teeth, it had bony ridges like a turtle. It's been calculated that they had a bite force of 8,000 pounds per square inch, putting it on par with crocodiles and T-Rex in terms of being history's strongest biters. T-Rex is literally compared to everything. It's basically the unit of measurement of dinosaurs. Uh, not just dinosaurs. Any animal. Dunkleosteus is not a dinosaur. They also believe, based on the evidence in the skull regarding its musculature, that it could have opened its mouth in 1 50th of a second, meaning it vacuumed food into its guillotine of a mouth. The plates that make up the teeth changed as the fish aged from a solid, rigid jaw to segments that allowed it to hold prey easier and made it more effective in biting through the bony plate armor of other armored fish. 
In the arms race that was the prehistoric ocean, Dunkleosteus was a predatory super tank. Predatory super tank. I honestly don't know how to comment on that one because it just feels like this person is trying to sound cool. Number 6. Basilosaurus. Basilosaurus were predatory ancestors of modern whales and could be 50 to 85 feet long. It's described as being the closest a whale-like dinosaur has ever come to being almost snake-like because of how long and sinuous it was. Whale-like dinosaur again. So, Basilosaurus is a mammal, alright? Basilosaurus is a mammal. It lived after non-avian dinosaurs went extinct just like the Leviathan did. Imagine swimming in the ocean with an 80 plus foot long alligator snake whale. Now imagine being afraid to even take a bath ever again. Physical evidence suggests that Basilosaurus did not have the cognitive ability of modern whales, nor the ability to echolocate, and could only navigate in two dimensions, so no deep diving or breaching. So Obviously, this guy treats the animals as if they were monsters. In this case, they call these creatures quote-unquote sea dinosaurs, and they treat them like bloodthirsty monsters. At least this monster whale was dumber than a bag of prehistoric hammers and couldn't chase you if you dove or scrambled out on dry land, probably forever. Basilosaurus translates roughly as King Lizard, which sounds like the name of a Legend of Zelda mini-boss. Legend of Zelda mini-boss. In the middle of a paleontology video that's supposed to be quote-unquote educational. There really is no words to say. And existed during the late Eocene period. For those of you who don't know what that means, that's roughly 40 to 35 million years ago. Number 5. Alberto Nectes. The Alberto Nectes is an extinct genus of elasmosaurid plesiosaur known from the late Cretaceous bear paw formation of Alberta. It is an elasmosaur? So, it is not a dinosaur, it's just another marine reptile. Try and say that three times when you're drunk, or even once sober, took me five tries. These fellas' unique selling point was that neck. They could give giraffes a run for their money when it comes to a game of how much can you swallow at once. Um, I don't think that's how it works. Okay, so this video is not made for kids, but it is made for all these unaware people. Uh, ones that uh, are mainstream, alright? Of the dinosaur type known as Elasmosaurus, all of them have long necks, but the Alberto Nectes has the longest by far, reaching up to 7 meters, or 23 feet. Number 4. Thalassomedon. From the Greek Medon, meaning lord or rule, the Thalassomedon was the lord of the seas. At a length of 10.86 meters, or 35.6 feet, Thalassomedon wouldn't exactly fit in your fish tank at home. As if the statement isn't 200% obvious already, this statement is probably just for the really, really, really dumb people, alright, that don't have common sense. Its extraordinarily long neck had 62 vertebrae and was roughly 5.9 meters long or 19 feet. There are six specimens, all of varying degrees of preservation, currently on display at various museums across the United States. With that much neck bone, we can only assume that those museums must have some very long exhibit rooms. Number 3. Maui Saurus. Even in 2017, the Maui Saurus was declared a nomen dubium because a 2017 paper restricted the Maui Saurus to the Lecta type. Maui Saurus was named after the Maori god Maui, who Hold the islands of New Zealand up from the sea floor with a fish hook. So already, you know this thing is going to be enormous. The neck of the Maui Saurus measured up to 49 feet long. You heard that correctly. This guy said the Maui Saurus's neck was 49 feet long. Okay, so the animal was considered to be over 8 meters. Even in, like, when it was not a Norman Dubium. This is probably the most ridiculous statement, oh my god, of any, any marine reptile it, I've ever heard of in my life. The longest proportionate and really actual neck of any living thing aside from some sauropod dinosaurs. Their overall length was about 66 feet. 
Their overall length was about 66 feet. And that ridiculously long neck had plenty of vertebrae, implying that it was very flexible. Imagine a snake strung through a sea turtle with no shell, and you have an approximate idea of what this thing looked like. It lived back in the Cretaceous era, meaning that creatures that jumped into the water to avoid velociraptors and tyrannosaurs had to contend with these. It did not have to worry about the velociraptor and the T-Rex, because one, the Mauisaurus, lived in a completely different environment from the Velociraptor and Tyrannosaurus, and two, they did not exist at the same time. Neither of them did. The jury's out on which is worse. As far as science can tell, Mauisaurus was limited to the New Zealand area, showing that the area that would one day become Australia and its neighbors was always a land of terror. Number 2. Chronosaurus it was a mere 30 feet long. So you're calling 30 feet long just mere for for whatever reason, okay. And the longest teeth in its massive mouth were up to 11 inches long. This is why it was named after Cronus, the king of the old Greek titans. Guess where it lived? If you guessed Australia, then you've been paying attention to life and are correct. The head was up to 9 feet long. They could eat an entire modern man whole and still have room left over for half of another. As if there aren't even larger creatures. It's also been suggested that since their flippers are so similar in design to those of modern sea turtles, that they may have crawled out onto land to lay eggs. What? Is this some sort of... Is this some sort of theory that you just came up with? You can be sure no one was digging up these things' nests to get at the eggs. Number 1. Ichthyosaurus I'm surprised you didn't include pe stuff like Mosasaurus, Tylosaurus, whatever. Derived from the Greek words for fish and lizard, the Ichthyosaurus was smaller than most of its relatives, but still a heck of a big dino. Heck of a big dino. How is Ichthyosaurus considered big? It has a mass of just 91 kilograms. With individuals measuring up to 3.3 meters, that's 11 feet in length, you still wouldn't want to wind up on the wrong side of one. They also hold the honor of being the first complete fossil discovered by the legendary British paleontologist Mary Anning. Without the discoveries she made, including the existence of Ichthyosaurus, we never would have discovered the idea of extinction. Okay, so to be fair, the Ichthyosaurus was discovered in 1821 before the Megalosaurus and Iguanodon, the two first non-avian dinosaurs to be discovered. Um, the Megalosaurus was the first one, actually, 1824. Seriously, it sounds crazy to say that there was a time before we knew animals could go extinct, but why would early man think there may have once been animals that are now extinct? They had no reason to think that. And even after discovering the bones of dinosaurs, they wouldn't exactly leap to the conclusion of extinction. They'd panic and think they were still out there. Which, to be fair, uh, science was not as advanced in the 19th century, especially compared to now, obviously. But Mary Anning's many incredible discoveries helped the scientific community slowly, yet surely, figure out that there were some animals, dinosaurs most definitely included, that once existed but now no longer do. For the longest time, this theory was resistant. Even the most sciency of scientists were adamant that they were finding evidence of new creatures, not ones long dead. It's supposed to be called 10 biggest sea dinosaurs in the world, the title, by the way. The Ichthyosaurus is not one of the quote unquote sea dinosaurs. Sea dinosaurs. The term is absolutely dumb anyway. Many of them felt the theory of extinction had to be nonsense because it could imply God's creation had been imperfect. But Mary Anning's many discoveries, starting with the Ichthyosaurus, unraveled that notion. Thanks to this not-so-little dino, we now have a much better understanding of how extinction and evolution, and by proxy, the entire animal kingdom, works. If you were to take a dip in the water, which- Oh, so, the finest video is- also, just clickbaity. I, I thought it would. I thought it would get straight to the point. So, sorry, I was wrong about that. But with all these ridiculous statements like the Leviathan being a will-like dinosaur, 
Crossaurus crawling out of land. Ma Maui Saurus being 66 feet long. Man, this is just absolutely insane. I, I don't know. Like, is it on par with Americano Origins Explained, Brightside, whatever? There, there really isn't anything to say. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you all next time. Thank you.